So guys, in order to recruit, um, again, you need to have recruiting conversations that also include, include your story. Okay. People don't buy what you do, what you sell, they buy why you do it. Okay. So you want to you need to have a recruiting story. So once you log into the agent site, you want to go to the agent resources area. It's the first thing under login, the first drop box you see. Boom. Under agent, and we actually went over a lot of this stuff last Thursday on this Zoom. But under here you have the new hire section, welcome new hire phone list for agent interviews when you're new guys you should be logging into here and there's a list of about eight or nine uh, um, experienced agents on here and their phone numbers and a few uh, sample questions you should be calling until you get a hold of three or four of these people and just asking them a few questions how long you been here what do you like best about your career what do you like the least about it what's hard why do you do that even though it's hard uh, if you go back over and start over, uh, what, if anything, would you do differently? <clears throat> and what are some tips you'd give me on how to get off to a great start? So just some great, and you can ask them whatever you want to, but those are some great questions to ask people so you can get off to a great start. And then our conference call Zoom schedule is also on there. Under new agents, you have the success manual, which we'll be learning from today. You have how to prepare properly for sales academy. Trayvon, that'd be a great thing for you to dig in with this week. Okay, field training preparation. You're gonna hit that field on next Thursday, <clears throat> the Thursday of your sales academy week. Well, you wanna be ready. And the sales talk is also in there too, which you need to have memorized, okay? If you don't have the sales talk memorized, guys, it is like going into a, um, it's going up, showing up to a gunfight carrying a knife. It's not a good, you know, the odds aren't good. So you wanna stack the odds in your favor. There's also forms and scripts, which we talked about this, uh, last week, we talked there. There's continual training where there is a truckload of MP3s on here, the fit modules, all these little, uh, all these Zooms that we record. We put them on our Protect One Family YouTube channel. If you want to subscribe to that, you just actually just go on YouTube and find Davenport Schneider, eight, Globe Life, Davenport Schneider Agencies, and you can find it and then like it and follow it. <clears throat> We've got a couple years worth of Zooms that have been recorded on there. So if you missed it, you can still get it. Uh, Sharpening the Saw uh, on SoundCloud is there. That's great technical material. The Elevators podcast. Guys, if you listen to, did nothing but listen to an Elevators podcast episode one a day for your first month, <clears throat> you'd be so far ahead of the game. Continual training audios, B2B training videos, actual people walking into business and approaching live prospects and saying what we say okay but i'm going to actually back up what i want to share with you guys under useful links if you click there you'll see a set of train tracks and the very first thing top middle is creating your recruiting story if you click on that and after we covered this about a month or so ago <clears throat> and about five people created their recruiting story within 24 hours awesome those people had that nice and typed up emailed into their inbox and they have now a script that they can practice rehearse memorize naturalize and then internalize and then eventually personalize because i mean it is personal it's your story so you start off by putting your name and email address on here and then there's about five pieces to this who are you and what did you used to do for a career, write this in the first person. My name is Trayvon. You know, this is you talking to an individual. Hey, before coming to Family Heritage, I was, I was a prison guard. Yeah, I know. Doesn't really sound like it would lead to sales, but yep. This this shows other people that you weren't directly in direct sales. You weren't selling insurance before this. That answers the objection. What if I have no experience? Well, neither did you. I never sold insurance before this either. Neither did I. Why were you looking? What was missing from your other career? Made a ton of money, but didn't have any flexibility. I wasn't making the money I wanted to. Didn't really work around people that really appreciated me. You know, boss treated me like crap. People can relate to that. So how you found family heritage, okay? What impressed you the most? Love the culture, love the people, love how positive they were. They seem to have great systems in place, whatever that is. Now, what it's done for you so far, you know? If you're Jason Miller, you'd say, hey, man, instead of missing all my kids' baseball games and, and, uh, and dreading every waking up Sunday because I knew I had to go to work on Monday, man, I love my life. I got it back. Doing family time with the, with the kids, 
Uh, life is different. And the best part is this. You know, we haven't even scratched the surface yet. Just learning how to be in the leadership. And here's an invitation to watch our career spotlight video. And guys, and, and boom. That's how you talk to people and recruit. You submit that, comes in a nice printed up form, and boom, there you have it. So <clears throat> that is how to have recruiting conversations. Um, back to uh, the good news. I kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent, which I sometimes do. Uh, sales good news. We've had a bunch of it so far this week, guys. Um, so far, have f people having protected families. We have Katie Beertz as protected families two days this week. Xavier Zamora, Trinity Tolbert. Uh, Daisy Villapondo had a family protected on 11 and a half hours, six demonstrations yesterday and four applications over a thousand. Zach Tolbert's got families protected a couple days, two out of three days this week. Damien Dangel, System Odom, you know, as his demos have gone up, so have his sales. Way to go, Damien. Uh, Jeremiah Cook. Guys, today is Jeremiah's birthday. Be sure that you give him some love on Voxer. Be sure that you, if you have his uh, number, give him a text message. Uh, he is 33 years old today, so please um, wish him well. Actually, if you want to do it, do it, go way personal and send him a personal text message or even a phone call. Um, I know he would love it. Uh, Jeremiah's uh, phone number, if you want to write this down, guys, is 434-401-1239. Uh, Again, 434-401-1239. <clears throat> Jeremiah is over 1,400, and he's, he's, uh, he said his goal today is to have his first Globe Week in a day. So if that happens, watch out. Could be Eagle time. Double A, Amber Alderson. She's already got 17 demos this week so far, over nine hours each day, and she's already got a pair of families, four applications, over set, around 1,700 in premium. Adam Woody, over 1,900 so far this week. Adam, we're missing Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll get that updated. Uh, Maria Klusnik's already over 2,000 for the week so far. Derek Pinnell, OTB, on the board every day this week. He's already, he's averaging nine hours a day and uh, right at five demos. Uh, and he's over, uh, right at his builder's week for the week so far. Renee Vaught's over, uh, right at 3,000 for the week so far. Jason Miller's up over 3,400 for the week so far. He's got six demos every day this week. Rachel Hutchinson, Monster Monday, big effort Monday. She sold over 3,550 on Monday alone. Casey Fine is over 30, right at 3,600 for the week so far. And Trish Mosier uh, is leading the charge in the organization with a little over, just under 3,800 for the week so far. Just a lot of consistent effort out there, guys. We're sitting at about 32,000 and, uh, and climbing. So, um, yeah, rock and roll. Um, guys, I'm going to shift gears here real quick. And I'm going to, we're going to talk about why people need our products. Guys, understand that, again, People don't buy what you need unless they, or what you have, unless they feel they have a need. And I want you to write this down, guys. A strong enough need trumps any objection. A strong enough need <clears throat> trumps any objection. You guys, the same people that tell you that they have to think about, okay, 50 bucks a month to protect their family that's going to help them in their time of need and oh by the way is going to refund them all their money back if they stay healthy those same people are going to swinging by walmart and buying an inflatable pool for 200 dollars later that day there are people that tell you that they need to ask somebody a, a spouse a significant other their mom and then just to for 80 bucks a month but then they're going out to lunch three times a week, spending 15 bucks each time, 45 bucks a week, $180 a month on lunch. Guys, there are people that are telling you that they're just not sure that get a Starbucks for $5 every morning on the way to work. 20 days a month, that's $100 a month on coffee. So guys, just understand that on every single uh, sales call, a sale is made. Either you sell them a, a product and sell them a policy and sell them on why they need it, or they sell you on their excuse on why they need to put it off and wait. Okay. Be sure that you're the one out there doing the selling, not the one doing the buying. Okay. So guys, let me just share this with you. Facts tell, stories sell. I enrolled in this plan July 2006. Six months, two months later, I was diagnosed with cancer. 
You never know when cancer may strike. This plan helped me to pay for travel expenses, medicines, etc. When I realized that um, that one out of two men will get cancer, I felt I needed this coverage. I'm sure glad I have it. Client from Tell City, Indiana. Another client from Tuleta, Texas said, this policy was literally a lifesaver. I'm a single woman with no way to compensate for large deductibles, co-payments, and lost wages. The benefits have helped financially during a tough medical time. So guys, let's talk about why people need our product, okay? First off, <clears throat> and guys, we don't run into a truckload of retired people. Why is that? Because we're going into businesses. Because we're walking into businesses. We're calling on people that are working, not retired. So, <clears throat> but every now and then, guys, we're going to get referred to somebody's parents. So it's good to know why people that are retired. Every now and then we run into people that literally are retired, but are just kind of working just to, so, they, so they don't die. <laughs> They're just working so they have something to do. Okay. Um, guys, why do retired people need our products? They don't want to be a burden on their families. You know, retired folks are concerned about outliving their retirement funds. An illness would dramatically cut into those retirement funds. If a family had to take care of them, it would affect the incomes of their family. Their sons, their daughters would not be able to go to work. That would negatively impact them. <clears throat> they also don't want to dip into the principle of their investments. They're typically on a fixed income. Okay. And their chances of getting cancer are higher. Okay, so Damien, could you help me out here with why single parents need our products? Yeah, it's easy because they're the only ones supporting their, their, their kids. Okay, Damien, could you go ahead and go down the list? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, let me read this. They are the breadwinner. Without their income, there is none. Sick leave, disability, typically will not allow parents enough money, time, time to be with a sick child for 24 hours a day. Uh, single parents more than likely would be more, more expensive. An issue with one of their children will be the same as it happening to them personally as far as financially goes and um, allows them to get the best care for their kids and then six if something happens and they have to travel for treatment they have to figure out something to watch the kids or someone yeah <clears throat> so someone might have to watch their kids so guys these are all how many times a day do we run into single parents two three sometimes four times a day. Guys, single parents, you should have 80% closing. Matter, you know why? <clears throat> because there's no second parent involved. They're clinging to that, to that child because that's their world. You know, they've probably gone through a divorce, a split, which shook them to their core, and the child is what's left. That's the physical representative. That's, that's what they love. They want to protect that child. You guys, when you do group presentations and you collect yes cards back, okay, it says clearly on that card, what's your family situation? Are you single? Are you married? Are you a single parent? Guys, when we, when we break the, the yes cards up, we should put all the yeses in one stack and the noes in one stack. Don't you dare throw those noes away. Keep them because that's who you're going to call on last. But when you get your yeses, you then want to take your yeses and you want to break those up. Guys, there's a method to the madness here, okay? You want to break them up into single parents, single people, and then married people, okay? Guys, of, of, those, of those yeses, you want to call on the single parents first because single parents... A, they've got someone else to protect. Single people don't. Single people can give the excuse, oh, I'm not worried about me. I, I, you know, put me in the ground. 
<clears throat> they give you dumb things like that, which have no relevance, but they'll say things like that. Single parents don't say stuff like that. And guess what? Single parents don't have to ask a spouse. You're not going to get the spouse objection. So the highest percentage of closing is going to be single parents. Go see those people first whenever possible. Who do you think you see second? There's only two groups left. You got a 50 single people. shot. Single, single people, people. Married people. Single people. Single people. That's exactly right. Why? Because they're only making a decision for themselves. Right. There's not going to be a spouse objection. Right? Guys, think about how many times a day you get the spouse objection. You don't get those with single people. They don't have a spouse. Okay? You might get the significant other excuse. You might get the mom or dad excuse or some other excuse. But you're not going to get the spouse objection. <clears throat> and then lastly, guys, once you have the names of the, of the single parents and the single people that you have sold, you have proof, hey, people are buying this. That's when you then go see the married people. Okay, you're gonna get a lot less spouse objections when you dropped six or seven names of people that already bought in that business. Okay, think, okay. Guys, and then guess what? There's a whole nother group that you circle back and see after all the yeses. What group do you think that is? The no's. The no's. You go back and see the no's. Some of you might be thinking, well, they said no. Why would I circle back with them? Guys, they said no because they had no idea what this is. They said no because they don't want to be the guinea pig. They said no because they're just not sure they trust you just yet. Guys, once they've seen you in the business for three or four days, seeing other people, smiling, getting people signed up, and you – Drop the, the the fact that, hey, man, sorry it's taking me so long to get to you. I mean, everybody's just been so fired up about this and getting enrolled. Mike did, Susie did, uh, Tom did, uh, Julie did. Uh, I guess you're next. Guys, some of those people are going to go, uh, I, I, I check no. And some of those people are going to go, um, uh, uh, okay, I guess I am next. They don't even remember that they check no. So go and be sure to pleasantly approach those people too. A lot of them will sit down with you. Okay. Just ask Damien. Didn't you have a couple of people, Damien, with on your cards that checked no? They came in and sat down just really just to get their little form signed saying that they were going to pass. <clears throat> we'll talk about that document on a later Zoom. But in the meantime, it's like, hey, what, don't you want to see what you're saying no to before you say no? Uh, sure, I guess. I saw Damien sign up a couple of people that way. Oh, that's what this is. Yep, that's what this is. Let's get you enrolled. So, hey, Matt, can you help me out with why small business owners need our products? Because we sure do run into a lot of small business owners out there. Uh, yeah, um, because they have to worry about uh, keeping their business going, paying their bills, work, worried about their employees. Uh, when they're, not, they're there to take care of everything, they, they have to have something to fall back on. Absolutely. Um, so, guys, I can, I can tell already I've called on two people so far, <clears throat> and you guys, are, <laughs> you guys are coming up with stuff, which I do appreciate, um, but – just like um, our sales talk, all we need to do is read it, most of it, and not, all we need to do in this part right here is read what's on the page. So I'm going to call on the other Matt. Um, Matt, can you help me out with why small business owners need our products? There's eight, eight, eight examples right there on the screen. Yep. Uh, expensive health insurance and high deductibles. This product may allow them. I can't see the end. Does that say allow them? health insurance premiums by getting a higher deductible plan. Yeah, may, may, allow, may, allow, may allow them to pay less in health insurance premiums by getting higher deductible plan. <clears throat> okay. Let me, have, uh, let me they may full, have, go full screen. That might help a little bit. Does anybody else have it cut off too? It might be just because I'm on my phone in the car. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. Yeah, it's, it's a little small on the phone, but we can see it now. It's a lot bigger. Good. Yeah, that's better. They have more assets to protect. They have more fixed expenses, overhead, and 
at work and home, uh, worked their entire life to build a business. They do not want to lose that. I'm guessing is what that says. <laughs> I can't, it says they do not want. Yeah, don't business. want to lose it to cancer. Okay. Uh, they be the hero for their employees by offering more benefits. At no cost. <laughs> at no cost. <laughs> employees are part of the extended family, very emotional at. Very emotionally attached. I'll, I'll do the last one because that's, that's obviously smaller on your screen. Number eight is to protect the employees of the business. So if the owner got sick, there would still be a business to run. So guys, there are so many reasons why small business owners need this. And again, we don't want to just talk directly at these people. Hey, you have more assets to protect. Hey, Mr. Small Business Owner, you have more fixed expenses. Hey, Mr. Business Owner, if you couldn't work here, your business wouldn't run well, would it? Guys, people are going to be pride will cause them to die, jump in and say, oh, yeah, we could. We'd be good. It'd be a challenge, but we could do it. <clears throat> now you're in a fight. Now you're in a back and forth. You want to stay on their side when you're explaining this so people don't get defensive, so people don't let pride get in. And you do that by saying everything through a third party. You know, it's kind of like when I was talking to Paul Best, you know, over at, um, over at East Coast Towing. He said, you know, Van, I'd like to think that I've trained my people pretty well and they could at least keep the business going for a bit while I was out, but I know that it wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't run quite as smoothly if I weren't here in the day-to-day. -day. So yeah, something like this um, would definitely help, uh, quite a big deal. And then you can always, when you're done saying that third party, then you pause. And the last thing you say is you look at that prospect and you go, and when you think about it, Chris, that really makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? And you shake your head and nod up and down. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's called third party selling, guys. Get, get good at it. Guys, we talked a little bit on agents today about affluent people needing our products. Okay. Why use your own money? to help with expenses if you can use somebody else's. That's smart, especially since you get all your money back, okay? They have a lot more fixed expenses that will still be there if they're sick. You guys, Dan Shelton, uh, one of my dear friends in this business says, you know, wealthy people, everybody's just different levels of broke. You know, there are people that are paycheck to paycheck that make 30,000 a year. There are people that are paycheck to paycheck that make 300,000 a year. And guys, there's people that are paycheck to paycheck that make $3 million a year, okay? They just have nicer stuff. They have bigger mortgages. They have bigger car payments. They have bigger, bigger everything. And there's a lot of people out there that make a truckload of money. And you might look around and see all the trappings of wealth. But just like that guy, I, I forget what the commercial was, but he said, you know, hey, you've got a great, you know, you've got a car, a, fam a house, you know, you've got a, the country club membership. How do you do it all? And the guy goes, I'm up to my eyeballs in debt. <laughs> Guys, a lot of people are living that way. So just understand that and act as if, okay? Um, you know, they have become affluent because of, of, of a series of smart decisions. This is just another smart decision. It's like in that role play that we shared, you know? You know, Van, I didn't, but Paul Best sharing with me, he said, Van, I didn't get in there here by winning the lottery. My dad didn't give me this business. I built this business from the ground up by making a lot of smart little decisions along the way. And man, a policy that's going to give me an unlimited amount of cash if something happens to me or, or a member of my family, but it's going to refund me all my money back if nothing happens. <laughs> That's just one smart little decision because, yeah, sure, if I didn't work for a year, I could, I could take money out of my own savings and take care of things. I could probably weather that storm. But why the heck would I want to when, you, when I can use your money? That's just one more smart decision. And when you really think about it, Matt, that really makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? That Paul, that Paul he's one smart guy. Yep. Guys, and again, like I just said, most affluent people aren't really affluent. Most are living above their means. And they just, they're giving off the perception <clears throat> of being affluent. Guys, we run into some young people out there. Not that we want to build our business on 20 year olds or people in their 20s. Ideally, you want to build your business, you know, the majority of people should be in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, you know, 
have a have a mortgage, a couple cars, you know, two point two kids, you know, um, stuff that stuff to lose, things that they need to protect. Young people usually don't have many assets yet, so we have to dig a little bit more to find a need. First thing is cancer doesn't play any favorites. Sharing a testimonial of somebody young, okay? It affects young people. I mean, there's a whole hospital in Memphis, Tennessee, just for children that have cancer. It's called St. Jude, right? Guys, if if cancer can hit kids, it can hit people in their 20s, right? Okay, it affects young people, old and healthy people. Um, Hey, getting locked in at a lower premium now, especially knowing you get your premiums back. You know, it's like I was talking to a guy the other day in his 50s and he said, you know, man, gosh, I wish I'd seen this when I was in my 20s because I would have loved to have a a lower premium. But hey, it is what it is. I guess I better get covered now. You know, it's great to get covered when you're young. Number three, it's hard to save money. Okay, here you get to have insurance plus you get your unused premiums back when you're in your when you're in your 40s. Okay, think about all the things If you're in your 20s and don't have any kids, hey, you thinking about having kids someday? Yep. Well, guess what? 25 years from now? Yeah, you probably got a kid or two coming out of college and it's about time to start paying those those college loans back, right? Yeah, wouldn't it be cool to take a a cool 25 year anniversary, a silver anniversary trip with your wife, right? And do it on us. So use that return of premium. Just paint that picture of what they can use it for. Guys, Younger people don't, just like old people don't want to be a burden on their kids, young people don't want to be a burden on their parents, okay? Just like I was talking to a guy the other day, he was 23 years old, just out of college. He said, you know, Van, I spent the first 18 years of my life with my parents taking care of everything, paying for all my bills. Heck, they helped pay for college. Man, the last thing I want to do is be in my 20s, get out on my own, have something happen, and then potentially be a burden on them in my, in my adult years, too. Man, that's, that'd be terrible. You'll see young people sit there and start shaking their heads like, yeah, I don't want to be a burden on my parents either. Think these things through. Get good at telling these stories. Use a return of premium for college savings plans for future kids. We talked about that. Enroll in the policy while they can still qualify. They don't have any pre-existing conditions. Guys, a good line is always, and there's a good chance that you're as healthy today as you're ever going to be the rest of your life. You know, think about that. ICU rider, complications with pregnancy, children born premature end up in the NICU. Number eight, they're just getting started in life. And if something happens, they haven't saved as much money. There's not this nest egg to pull from. Okay. It would just be immediate debt. And younger people are more active in sports. Ultimate Frisbee, riding ATVs, jet skis. They could potentially get in an accident. Things could happen. Okay? Hopefully, guys, you feel a little more confident calling on some younger people now. Because, yeah, we're not going to build our business on young people, but we're also not just going to skip them because they're young either. We're going to do the demo. And if you're going to do the demo, you might as well be good at closing people in that situation. Guys, why do families need our products? Think about this. Stats, numbers never lie. Three and four will be affected. Chances are you, you will be affected by cancer at some point in the future if you have a family. It's the last thing you want to worry about is money. This allows you to focus on the fight, not the finances. Okay? It allows for the best care and it allows for the absolute best environment. Everyone can be there. That travel expense, you know, hey, would you want to travel if you were going out of state for treatment? Would you want to go by yourself? No. Who would you want to take with you? Your husband? Well, guess what? We're going to pay for him to go with you. You Your mom? Guess what? We'll pay for her to go with you. Unlimited amount of trips. Oh, and by the way, sir, I know you mentioned you have three daughters. If this travel benefits used for, for a child, we pay for the child's travel plus both parents. Okay? That's a big deal, guys. That hits people right in the feels. Selling is a transference of feeling and emotion. Families have more expenses and responsibilities, more mouths to feed, more bills. You know, one person gets wiped out, they all get wiped out. And most accidents, guys, happen within, uh, I've always heard, within a mile of the home. Okay, so that ICU rider is very valuable. Those accident plans 
That's where people spend their most time. Coming down the home stretch, guys, we're going to talk about men and women. Sitting down with men today, hey, one in two men get cancer. One in six men will have prostate cancer. Okay? Guys, there's some facts about prostate cancer. Know your products. African-American men get prostate cancer almost twice as often as white men. Don't, don't, don't hesitate to share that stat. You know, you're talking to a truck driver. Guys, there are certain um, professions that have higher risks of different types of cancer. The people that drive for a living that are sitting all day long have a much higher percent chance of prostate cancer. It's a fact. That's a fact that you should know. Okay, so know these things. Uh, choice of better care. You can go to specialists. Early detection benefit might get more men to the clinic. You know, a lot of men wait until something's hurting before they go to get checked out. If you're waiting until something hurts and it's cancer, there's a good chance it's too late. More men battle prostate cancer than women battle breast cancer. Breast cancer. Hey, Dan. Yes. Sorry to interrupt, but just like something that I've been using lately for the prostate stuff is it's no longer invasive. It's a blood draw now. That's right. Get checked. <clears throat> yep. A lot of men don't even know that. They think it's still the fingers and the whole the whole deal. Um, yep, you can just do a quick blood draw with all your other battery of tests that they run in your well man exam and they can do a PSA that way and tell you what's going on. It's good, good information though. Thanks for sharing that, Ron. And guys, oftentimes men are the primary breadwinner. Not often, I mean, not all the time, but often they are. Uh, so more often than not, they need to replace lost income and keep their home going. Guys, why do women need our products? Most women have a sense of security. They like to have that sense of security knowing that things will be taken care of if something happens. One in three women will get cancer. One in eight women will have breast cancer. You know, most women run the families, right? They run the household. So if they get sick, they're going to need some help. Okay. And if she's a stay at home mom, um, we're not going to see a lot of stay at home moms because we're not doing a whole lot of home sales, but there's no replacement of income when the husband will need to miss work. Guys, here's the thing is you got somebody that tells you there's a, they're a single income family and they say, oh, no, or a double income family. And they go, oh, no problem. If uh, she gets sick, I mean, my income will take care of things. If I get sick, her income will take care of things. Well, hey, you know, it's like I was sitting down with John Doe. And he said, you know, man, we didn't even really think about this ahead of time. But when my wife got sick with breast cancer, it wasn't like I just left, left the house every day and said, hey, honey, see you tonight. Good luck with cancer today. I'm going to go make some money. No, I had to take the same time off work that she did for support, to take her to treatments, to take her to doctor's appointments. Hey, guys, when my mom had um, endometrial cancer in the 90s, my dad took her wig shopping. I mean, he missed the same three and a half months of work that she did. <clears throat> That's a double income loss. It's actually worse if the stay at home parent gets it because there's no disability. There's no workers comp for the stay at home person. It's worse if a kid gets it. People might think, oh, why would I want to cover my kids? They don't bring in income. Well, if it's your kids and you miss work because of your kid, you're not gonna get disability pay from your work. If it's you, you might. If you get hurt on the job, you might have workers comp, but if your kid breaks their leg at school and you take time off work, you're not gonna get workers comp for that. There's nothing. So think about that, guys. The way people's brain works is the exact opposite of what the reality is sometimes, and we have to be the voice of reason. Why do husbands need our products? Most men want to have the feeling of being the provider and helping their families if something happens where they could wind up feeling powerless, helpless, less of a man. Two, their family's often relying on their income. Three, they need to get the best care because their family needs them. Why do homeowners need it? Well, they could lose their home. If you can't make the mortgage, you're going to lose the house. You know, whether you're sick or injured, you still got to pay the bills. Mortgage got to be paid every month. You can't pay a doctor bill. Guess what? They're going to send you another bill the next month and say, please pay this. As long as you send a dollar a month, as long as you send something, <clears throat> they can't touch you. Try sending a dollar uh, uh, for your mortgage payment and see how that works out after two or three months. It doesn't. Self-employed people. Many times they have private health insurance with higher deductibles. And thus there's a lot more out-of-pocket expense. This is a great way to hedge 
hedge their bets with that. There's no such thing as a paid day off for the self-employed. Three, they don't make or have time to or don't know where to go looking for benefits or protection. They're too busy working, too busy running their business. You know, many times self-employed people work even when they don't feel well. So our so plans like ours <clears throat> where you get paid on what happens, then whether or not you miss work is beneficial. Many times they're not off work long enough for disability short term or long term to kick in. OK, who was it? Jeremiah said yesterday on Voxer that he had to remind a client that, no, your wife didn't have to miss work to file that to file that claim it has nothing to do with that. They're oftentimes the, the, the blood light, the lifeblood of their business, and they're often the primary breadwinner. So, guys, <clears throat> that's a little bit today. I'm going to pause for a second. Um, can I get a little comments from the peanut gallery? I always like to know that something shared today landed, something helped. Anything that you guys heard today that was helpful that you can put out in there and use yourself? Third party, uh, third party stories, Dan. Third party stories keep people from getting defensive. Yep. And you can always circle back at the end of a third party with and when you, when you think about it, Ron, that really makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yep. Got time for one more. Yeah, just knowing those extra stats. I mean, some of the, you know, that, some of those were, uh, you know, worse than even what what, this, what our presentation shows. So not, the more detailed you could make those stats to a specific, you know, uh, type, type of worker that you're dealing with, you know, yeah. the better. Guys, some of you maybe have heard that. Thanks for sharing that, Adam. Some of you guys maybe heard that going, man, that's great information. Man, I'm driving. I wish I could have written that stuff down. Well, guys, let me just share this with you. If you go to the success manual, which we just showed you exactly where it was on the legacy, uh, excuse me, on the Protect One Family website, you can just scroll down to pages 46 through 50, why people buy our products and developing the need. That is a great skill to have, the ability to develop the need no matter who you're in front of. Because guys, a strong enough need trumps any objection. And guys, I'm gonna end up on this note right here. Um, just kind of where we started this, we're gonna end it there too. And that is with why. The policy has been a blessing during my battle against cancer. I've not had to worry of paying my bills and keeping my home going or paying extra hospital bills. I've only had to be concerned getting well. I'm so thankful for the agent who came to me. At the time, I thought, I won't need it. The benefits were too good to be true. Family Heritage has done everything it said it would. That's one of our clients in Paris, Texas. So guys, let's go out today and just remember that we have been so very blessed in our lives. Let's go be a blessing for somebody else. And guys, half the battle for most salespeople is showing up. Let's not only show up, but let's show up prepared, ready uh, to help those families that we serve out there. Guys, thanks so much and have a great day. Thank you, Van. Thanks, Van. Thanks, bud. Bye, guys.